Hi guys, myself Pranob is here to deliver today's presentation on Power Transformer Part 35. As of continuation, the topic is mainly comprised of bushing technology for power transformers. For your convenience, the link of the previous one is given under the description box. Let's start with determination of cellulose paper, degree of polymer, poly, mar, ma, polymerization. Degree of polymerization of cellulose-based craft paper is the basic estimation of the average length of the cellulose molecules. Cellulose is a linear polymer and is formed by a sequence of glucose monomers and the degree of polymerization of craft paper is the prevailing number of such monomeric units in a chain. Technically speaking, it has to represent the average number of units of glucose for each cellulose chain. Cellulose-based craft paper, while dipped into mineral oil, would have been degraded over time mainly because of constant stress as developed on the paper due to electrochemical action. There are two types of electrochemical action would have been taken place. One, acid hydrolysis and oxidation. Both are responsible for evolving the process of depolymerization within the polymolecular chain structure of the cellulose-based craft paper. This has ultimately led to a loss of mechanical strength of the paper and thus to have become brittle and fragile. To evaluate the quality of the paper used and in order to entertain an extensive useful life, it is required to determine its exact value of degree of polymerization, what is called DP. <clears throat> Aging and degradation of the craft paper impregnated with mineral oil is also to be categorically responsible for determining the useful life of the transformer. It has been exhibited that once the DP, that is degree of polymerization of a craft paper, reaches to a value around 250, then its mechanical strength to withstand the evolved electromechanical tensions would thereby to reduce at least 50% as of the capacity of fresh paper. If such type of occurrence would have been observed during the determination of DP in order to evaluate the quality of insulating paper, then the subject transformer is considered to have reached the end of its useful life. For any of the polymeric materials, the degree of polymerization is one of the most important molecular properties that would have to correlate with the mechanical strength of polymers. <clears throat> Therefore, correct DP determination is of great significance to assess the actual condition of polymeric materials like insulating papers. Specifically, 
for insulating papers direct measurement of dp is quite difficult and certain underneath uh, conventional process are typically used one membrane osmometry size exclusion chromatography viscometry and mass spectrometry these conventional techniques are of much more time consuming require specialized instrumentation system with skilled operating personnel and the most important part is to note that the readings as collected sometimes might have been erroneous for dp determination of insulating paper a simpler as well as faster analytical method is specially developed by implementing a portable device equipped with the quantitative potential of near infrared spectroscopy which has to provide a non destructive alternative to conventional chemical analysis all over the world near infrared or nir spectroscopy is thus to be an essential analytical tool for the structural analysis of the cellulose paper nir spectroscopy method has to operate within the near infrared electromagnetic spectrum and the spectra would have been obtained by diffuse reflectance using the spectral range between 1260 to 2500 nanometers not 1 micrometer equals to 1000 nanometer near infrared radiation wavelengths are slightly higher than those of visible light that is 700 nanometer principle of spectroscopy is based on the definite purpose of identifying the structural configuration of the elements with their corresponding atoms and molecules basically it is the study of the interaction between the element and the electromagnetic radiation there are different types of spectroscopy with large number of wavelengths emitted by these systems makes it possible to investigate the structural bonding of atoms and molecules of the element in detail through its emission spectrum spectroscopy has also to provide detailed analytical phenomena of the constituents in material having unknown chemical composition spectroscopic techniques are widely used in in producing profiles of containing an extensive amount of informative characteristics which can effectively be exploited through the use of multivariate mathematic and statistic that is chemometric techniques spectroscopy based analysis as being done through online or offline type of application would help to chalk out a most deserving predictive maintenance models of a delicate component for both quantitative that is 
calibration and qualitative that is classification responses <clears throat> however to determine the degree of polymerization in insulating papers the accepted method is based on the process of nir spectroscopy combined with partial least square that is pls regression NIR spectroscopy can be used as a process monitor to work out a perfect signature analysis for the onward condition of product properties, including its physical and chemical classification. It is capable of performing rapid and non-destructive analysis of multi-constituent organic substances with their respective quantitative determination of a great variety of substances in solution. The technique must have to rely on the basic concept on splitting of light beam while strikes an object. Some parts of the light beams are absorbed and the rest is reflected on or transmitted. Mm -hmm. Some parts of the light beams are absorbed and the rest is reflected or transmitted. So, NIR spectroscopy is dealing with the resultant interpretation of absorption, emission, scattering, reflection and diffuse reflection of light in the region of 800 to 2500 nanometer <coughs> wavelength. The type of interaction would have to depend on wavelengths of corresponding light beams and the object's chemical composition. <coughs> NIR spectroscopy as relates to Beer-Lambert law, NIR spectroscopy is implemented according to the basic perception of transmittance and absorbance of light by a substance which are followed by an explanation of the Beer-Lambert law. However, Beer-Lambert law is a combination of two different laws. One is Beer's law, another is Lambert's law. August Beer, 31st July 1826 to 18 November 1863, was a German physicist, chemist, and mathematician had stated that concentration and absorbance of light are directly proportional to each other. What he has said, <clears throat> concentration and absorbance of light are directly proportional to each other. Johann and Reich Lambert, 26th August 1728 to 25, 25th September 1777, was also a German physicist and mathematician, had stated a law of light absorption where he mentioned that the absorbance of light and its path length are directly proportional. Beer's law has explicitly involved in the hold of physics, chemistry and meteorology. <clears throat> 
logy. The law is applicable in chemistry for measuring the concentration of chemical solutions, analyzing the degree of oxidation, and determining the degree of polymerization. It can help to identify the mechanism of polymer degradation that includes thermal degradation, photodegradation, catalytic degradation, and biodegradation. The law can also guide to characterize the specific changes in attenuation of radiation while passing through the different cyclic phase of climatic and atmospheric conditions. The Beer Lambert law has established a linear relationship between the concentration and the amount of light absorber present in the solution, which enables to calculate the concentration of a solution by measuring its absorbance. Accordance with the law, it can then to be established that the light attenuation through a medium is proportional to the concentration of the light absorbers present in the medium which also have direct relevance with the optical properties of the light absorber and the optical path length traveled by the light beam. Now, if the medium is of a composite solution, then the amount of light as absorbed by the solution that must have a relation to the molar concentration of a chemical substance whose chemical analysis would have to be subjected for. The Beer Lambert law is thus to be expressed as absorbance A is directly proportional to the molar concentration C of the chemical substance in solution that is A is directly proportional to C. <coughs> absorbance is directly proportional to the molar concentration of the chemical substance in a solution. Now B, absorbance A is also directly proportional to the light path length L, that is A is directly proportional to L. From A and B, A is directly proportional to C into L or A equals to epsilon Cl where the constant epsilon is called molar absorbity or molar absorption coefficient. Points to be concluded. One, a solution is a homogeneous mixture of one or more solutes dissolved in a solvent in which the solute would have been a gas, a liquid or a solid, whereas the solvent is the substance that is present in the greatest amount. <coughs> Molar concentration is a measure of the solute concentration in a solution. Molar concentration is a measure of the solute concentration in a solution. Molarity M is defined as the total number of moles of solute dissolved in per liter of solution. Number five, while a beam of light is transmitted through a solution, then value of absorbance as corresponds to the percentage of transmittance would have to vary on the molar concentration of the solute. Beer-Lambert law 
for NIR light propagation in a solution. Light attenuation is a basic property of light, isn't it? Light attenuation is a basic property of the light. While light is entering into a solution, will undergo a process of absorption and scattering by the solvent and the solute contained in the solution, which will lead to a process of light loss. The whole process is called the attenuation process. Now, the attenuation coefficient is an important parameter for the study to quantify how much an incident energy beam is weakened. The attenuation coefficient is thus to be influenced by factors such as condition of the solvent, solute concentration, nature of incident, energy beam, angle of incidence of the energy beam, etc. Again, I repeat, the attenuation coefficient is thus to be influenced by factors such as condition of the solvent, solute concentration, nature of incident energy beam, angle of incidence of the energy beam. So the attenuation coefficient has to indicate a dec decrease in light intensity while light beam is passing through a medium. There is a distinct difference in between absorption coefficient and attenuation coefficient. Light absorption coefficient indicates how far light of a particular wavelength can penetrate into a material before being absorbed. Most important, light absorption coefficient indicates how far light of a particular wavelength can penetrate into a material before being absorbed. Material of which light is poorly absorbed, that indicates material has of the quality of low absorption coefficient. The higher the absorption coefficient means, the shorter length of the light can penetrate into a material before it is absorbed. The attenuation coefficient indicates the total loss of narrow beam intensity, including scattering as well as absorption while it passes through a specific material. The attenuation of near infrared NIR light intensity as it propagates in turbid solution, then the modified Beer Lambert law is normally used for NIR spectroscopic data analysis and to quantify the changes of molar concentration of the solute. In case of determining the condition of paper insulation, which is completely dipped within the transformer oil, then the solvent is the oil and solute is the degraded fragile part of the insulating paper. NIR spectroscopy has to provide multi-constituent analysis of the component concentrations within the solution as because of its definite involvement in absorption, emission, scattering, reflection, and diffuse reflection of light. 
in practical application, NIR spectroscopy technique would have to depend on the differential absorption of light and also on the relatively transparent nature of paper tissue to infrared light. In a simpler form, NIR spectroscopy has to measure the paper tissue oxygen saturation level by determining the difference in intensity <coughs> between transmitted and received light delivered at specific wavelengths. The strategies of the spectral data has to be obtained by diffuse reflectance using the spectral range between 1260 and 2500 nanometer. To determine the degree of polymerization in transformer insulating papers can be revealed by using the NIR spectroscopy combined with partial least squares regression, PLSR method. The molecular deformation or stretching within the structural part of cellulose-based insulating papers which might have been caused due to certain stress levels in cellulose materials can be non-destructively evaluated through NIR spectroscopy analysis. Partial least square is a composite method for constructing a linear predictive models for comparative study of the components as derived by the process of NIR spectrometric calibration, where many highly collinear factors might have been present. PLS, in addition, during NIR spectrometric calibration, has been applied with an objective to monitoring and controlling the variables whose characteristics would have been rather found to be difficult in establishing the cause and effect relationship. In a regression model, the collinearity of predictor variable variables is thus to be a expressed as linear li relationship between the predictor variables, that is, they are exactly correlated. <clears throat> For the same regression model, the predictor variables are correlated and the predictor variables cannot independently predict the value of the dependent variable. But dissolved gas analysis for determining overall condition of transformer is a universal practice and by analyzing through Uranic derivatives in transformer oil that would have been correlated with the degree of polymerization of insulating paper. Uranic compounds in transformer oil are thus to be produced as because of decomposition reaction of cellulose chains. An increase in concentration of furanic compounds in transformer oil that corresponds to the decrease of the tensile strength and the degree of polymerization of the insulating paper. Furanic compounds are the compounds of carbon and hydrogen and the furan count if shown more than 2500 ppb that is 2.5 ppm, then parts per million. 2,500 parts per billion and 2.5 parts per million. Then it is understood that the transformer is about to fail. However, elaborate discussions regarding current analysis on transformer oil 
will be furnished in latter part of the presentation. Let's stop here. Further to be continued at later stage. Thank you for listening the video. Kindly do like, share, and subscribe. Your subscription would encourage to post more videos. Also share your comments or feedbacks inside the dedicated comment section. If you have any suggestions or specific topic you want, then let me know in the comment section. Thank you. Thank you for patient hearing.